Hello, I'm Tom Bailey, and I'm joined today by Peter Sandin, who helps small business owners get more leads and sales from their website. So, Peter, hello, and a very warm welcome to today's episode. Thank you. Great. Thanks for being here. And whereabouts are you in the world right now? I'm in Finland. Amazing. And, and how have things been over there for you? Well, I, I still like living here. <laughs> yeah, good. It's, it's a great place to live. I'm not sure it's a great place for tourists, but I think it's yeah. a very, very good place for living. Awesome. And now let's go on to the subject of Peter. So Peter's often called the marketer's marketer because more than half his clients are marketing experts. His primary focus is marketing messages and funnels, but he spent nearly a decade in copywriting and conversion optimization as well. So the title for today's episode is how to get more leads and sales from your website. And Peter's going to show us how to do that in just under seven minutes. So Peter, your first question for today is who are your ideal clients? Well, when it comes to the website stuff, it's business owners who have a website or already know that they need one. It doesn't really matter if you're redoing one or building a new, but the point is that you're still responsible for it. So if you've completely outsourced it and you have nothing to do with it, you have an ad agency or something doing it, then you're getting good results, then great. You're one yeah. of the lucky ones, but if mm -hmm. you're somehow responsible for it yourself, even if you have some help with the design and tech, then that's who I can help. Excellent. And thinking of these small business owners who are running their own website, what's the biggest challenge they typically face? Usually it is that no matter how many times they redesign the website, no matter what tool or design they try, it doesn't actually start generating many leads or sales. And it often even actively hurts their sales because potential customers before making the final decision to buy, they might be even close. And then they go to the website to sort of get that last confirmation for themselves that this is a good idea. And then they get a mixed message of what it is that you're really about. And it creates this sense of confusion of like, I'm not sure if this is really what I need. Like what, when we talked, I got the different idea and then they end up not buying after all. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that, I guess, jumping from platform to platform, there's, you know, Wix, WordPress, ClickFunnels, Kajabi. And, and do you find that that's, you know, an annual cycle or, or, or something? Yeah, I think people often make switches because the different platforms are really good at promoting their own platform as mm -hmm. the solution. It it isn't. It's not yeah. the technology, but yeah, but yeah. And 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 this switching and lack of con conversion, what impact does it typically have on their business? Uh, well, quite commonly, my clients, regardless of where they start from, see at least about a six-figure increase in sales if they really do their website right. But wow. that means we also do the marketing message well, which affects all your marketing. Because if you know what are the most compelling things you could be saying so that people really want to like actually see the things they need to see so they want to buy, then yeah, it, it impacts all the marketing. But six figures is usually what the project ends up being right away. Obviously, if you start from seven, eight figures, then you might see much more. But even if you start from just barely six figures or almost no sales, then six figures is a very common impact on, on the leads, uh, on the sales. Incredible. And for those business owners that aren't yet at six figures, what's one valuable piece of advice that you might give them to help them push to that, that uh, target? Um, maybe twofold answer. One is to have a very specific goal for the website. So direct people to something you actually want them to do next, make it easy, make it appealing. But when you describe what it is, when you describe what you do, say fewer things, at least initially, have a much clearer, simpler thing you start with so that people can really understand it very, very quickly. Don't try to be the stereotypical used car salesman who lists out 50 different benefits, mm -hmm. rather just say the most important ones, because that, that makes people feel like that's right for me. It's not just good in every way, it's specifically what I want. And, and I guess, would you say that a lot of that comes from really knowing who your ideal client is or who you're targeting? Yeah, you have to have that first. And I think you have to do it for based on their perspective instead of based on what they look like to you. So usually target yeah. customers defined by what they look like to us, whereas what you need for the message is for you to define them based on their perspective towards you. If they don't see you and what you do in similar ways, then no message is going to be very effective. You have to define it based on their perception or their perspective to the topic. That's really valuable, actually, because sometimes 
when we look at personas, we, we start listing what coffee do they drink, what car do they drive, but ultimately, um, you know, that's what they look like to us. It, it's not necessarily their pain points or their desires, which is what we should be looking at. Yep. Thank you. And just the next question is, if we've got somebody out there who really does need your help, have you got a free resource or anything you can share with them to really help them solve that problem? Well, I have a very clear process for redoing or building a new website. Uh, and I went through that process very recently when I rebuilt built my own website. And I recorded a video about the whole thing where I go through why I did things, how I did things, uh, give some insight to how you do different things well, the common pitfalls to avoid and so on. And that video is available uh, for free if you want to see how it actually goes. And, and have you got a landing page people can go to that we yep. can? It would yep. be sixfigurewebsite.com. Okay, sixfigurewebsite.com. Six figure website. It's written with a number six and then okay. a figure website. Thanks, Peter. And what I'll do as well is I'll, I'll, I'll drop that link below this episode so people can just click that and they can obviously navigate straight to that page. Now, slightly off topic, I guess, a little bit is... Question six, and that is, what would you say is your greatest failure that you've ever made, either in life or in business? And what did you learn from it? Well, I think one that I've done many times, and I think most people do many, many times, and that is what makes it such a failure, is to stick to an old plan or an old belief without necessarily even noticing, even if there is clear indication that you do, should do something different, if it isn't working. If, if the basic that you're trying to do, it's not leading anywhere, still wanting to stick to it because either you don't recognize that you have a belief you're trying to stick to or that you have some need for sticking to the plan because of sunk cost fallacy or some other <laughs> mental issue. Uh, yeah. Like I, I really see sunk cost as a, like a, if I ever notice that it effect, plays a part in my thinking, I really feel like I'm, I'm like I'm losing it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like I think that's something that has happened many, many times. And what I just learned from it is to just be more humble about what what actually is happening, be more realistic about it. I think it doesn't mean you have to be super negative, just be more realistic. Look at things as, well, this is truly what's going on. These are actually the results I'm getting. I need to change. If I don't want to keep getting these results, I genuinely have to look at something different to do. Great, great insights from your own journey. And the final question from me is to really help add value here. What, what's one question that I should have asked you that will also give that great value to this audience today? Why is it that almost all website redesign projects fail? And why is that? Because people focus on design and technology. And if you think you, if you go to a website, looks absolutely magnificent, best design ever. It has all the fanciest techn technology you ever see on a website, but it doesn't make you feel like you're going to get something you want. Are you going to stick around just because it looks pretty? Probably not. No. But let's say you go to a website that looks just fine, nothing special. It works, but no special technology. But immediately you get this sense of, hey, I can get something I really, really want and I can't get elsewhere. Are you going to stick around? Yes. So hmm. web development companies are 99% designers and techies. So no wonder yeah. they sell you a very pretty website that loads really quick, but yeah. that doesn't compensate for the lack of a good message, for the lack of a truly appealing next step for people to take. So focus on those things first and then just make it function because that's really the what you need from the design aspect of it. Amazing. And just one, one reflection for me on that is, one of the first questions people ask is what's in it for me. And that that's in a lot of different scenarios, but navigating to a website is, is, is one of those situations. Yeah. If they don't immediately get the sense of like, I can get something I really want, not just something that could be valuable for me, but something I act actively want, they're not going to stick around. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing that last point. Very valuable. And thank you so much for your time again, incredible meeting you and obviously for sharing all of that great advice you have for business owners. Thanks for having me.